Hail Caesar! Hey, housemates! Wanna play Glory to Rome? No, not at all. Wait, nope. What? I do not. Hang on. Come on, the art is famously awful. Oh, come on, it's... Wait, I'm... And it's such a hard game to get. You're not even holding a real copy right now. I... well... Yeah. Some of the cards are intentionally made to be runaway winners. Well, sure. I mean, that was that was kind of the idea. While some of the rules are just a little more convoluted than they need to be. Okay, hang on. The concepts are brilliant. Reusing cards as resources, actions, and buildings? Glory to Rome influenced the design of some of our favorites, like San Juan and Race for the Galaxy. Race? Everyone knows Roll for the Galaxy is better. Oh, boy. Listen, you asked if I want to play that. No, 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 no. I want to play Eucronia. It's difficult to avoid making comparisons between much of Karl Chudik's oeuvre. There is a sort of continuum of developmental evolution in many of his ideas. This treasure, Eucronia, published by Yellow Games, marks a transition between the much sought-after high-minded ideals of the game Glory to Rome and the self-aware whimsy of Motenai. What? Do I always sound like that? While the world awaited a reprint of the original Glory to Rome, Eucronia was released with some modified rules and magnificently improved art, featuring paintings by Marcin Jakubowski. Okay, I definitely love the art and the theme. Eucronia takes place in this imaginative world of high Roman politics, in a sort of Amazonian jungle and filled with people and also dinosaurs. The buildings we construct are wonderful things like the Ludasaurus and dinosaur games. We see a glimpse of this world-building ecosystem on cards like the port or the temple. Must you always flap your arms about when you talk? Explain the game, wiseacre. Gameplay is done almost entirely using these five card types. There will be a common area called the forum in the middle of the table. On our turn, we play a card from our hand. Cards do one of five actions and sometimes those actions won't be available. This means sometimes we'll want to take an action but we might lack the card in hand or the conditions won't be right to play it. So we'll have to plan out our actions with some contingency in mind. Playing a yellow action moves resources from the forum to our stock. Orange actions moves them from our hand to our stock. Red actions may allow us to take from other players, uh, again, into our stock. Playing gray actions moves resources from the stock to constructions in progress. Building these constructions is ostensibly the goal of the game. Uh, there's a player aid that has all this, so... There is a sort of flow to how cards will tend to move around the game table. Cards will go into the form, making them available for our stock, where they can move back into buildings and into activities. Whoa, that is quite a graphic. Okay, we'll, we'll put that on Board Game Geek or something. And what about these activities? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say there's this advanced layer to the game where we can use blue cards to invest our stock into making every action stronger when we do it later. The critical dynamic of Eucronia is that every action we play requires you to have another card available to fulfill that action. Generally speaking, we want to build these buildings. We need one action to start a construction and then an additional number of cards to complete the construction. The construction cost and the points awarded by the building is this number at the top. When any one player reaches a certain number of points, depending on player count, we finish the round and the game ends. Then we say something zany and leave him laughing. What do you say, housemates? Wanna play, you cronia? So is this gonna be our new thing?